Yeah, it's going to start in the... Okay, the recording has just started. So let's just pray together and then we will get uh, get into our lecture today. Can I request uh, somebody to just pray with the class? I'm sure the others will join us uh, while we get started. Um, yeah. Uh, Thomas, would you like to pray and help us start? Perfect. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you for this wonderful day, O oh Lord. We, you are so good. You are so wonderful. Mm. You are a faithful God. Thank you for this wonderful time, O oh Lord. As we are gathered mm. to learn from your word, Father, let, your, let the wisdom of the whole rest upon us today. We thank you, Father. Help us to understand the things. And Father, we speak the divine wisdom and anointing of the whole upon Pastor Ashish. Father, Help us to understand and help us to teach. Help us ask in a spiritual under. We thank you, we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, thank you. And good morning, everyone. Welcome once again. So we are continuing in this course on uh, urban church planting. And uh, just going to go ahead and share. We're still in our second section uh, in this lecture notes. So we are talking about um, um, the practical aspects. Uh, last week, uh, we spent time talking about strategies for urban evangelism. So we, we went through you know, how we can identify and develop different strategies. Uh, we, you know, and we just outlined some things that helped us think through. Um, and I'm sure, you know, in the in, in the in the days and months and years to come, we will be able to uh, do new things. I mean, come up with new ideas, new strategies. But uh, these are things that uh, that have helped us so far. Uh, when we look at strategies for different age groups, uh, when we look at strategies for different areas of need in the city. Uh, when we talk about strategies for different spheres of activity, that means, you know, you generally we, you know, we could break things down into like seven spheres and that's what we'll talk about today. Um, we also talked about leveraging tools, uh, different ways that we could, uh, different tools that we could use to reach uh, people. So, and, and a lot of this, you know, whether you're using print, news, you know, newspaper, social media, television, music, performing arts, uh, various ways we could use um, to reach people. Now, today, we want to move into the next chapter, which is 13, lesson number 13. And uh, we want to talk about the seven mountain assignment. Now, uh, this would be specific, sorry, specifically relevant for local churches. Uh, and uh, so when you are planting a local church uh, in an urban context, in a city uh, or a metropolitan area or a large urban center, uh, this understanding of you know, the seven mountain assignment will be very helpful. Um, if you are starting a Christian organization, so that's not a local church, but you know some other kind of a Christian organization that is looking at specific ministry, maybe like a youth, children, uh, you know, the underprivileged work among slums, or you know, certain section of society, so on. Um, you can still try to think about this. Uh, about the seven mountains, but um, uh, but uh, I am coming more, this lesson is coming obviously a little bit more specifically from uh, local church context. So what is the challenge here? Or what is the, the vision here in, in, in this? Uh, when we think about uh, most cities, and even, you know, you can extend this, uh, obviously you can extend this even to a nation as a whole, um, there are the influencers and decision makers, whether it's a city context or you're talking about a nation. That means there are people 
who are influencers and decision makers. And this is a very small group of people. If you look at it at a national level, uh, the small group of people, they are, they are making decisions, um, policies, thinking through on various areas that are actually influencing or affecting the lives of the rest of the people in the country. Uh, or, of course, you can look at it at a state level, state-wise level. You can look at it at a city level. So if you look at the city, uh, there, are, there are the decisions that are being made that affect the life of, peop of people in the city is actually in the hands of a few people. Uh, we call refer to them as influencers, decision makers. And uh, the, the thought here is how can we influence them? How can the church influence and impact the influencers and decision makers in a city or in a state or in a nation? Because if we can influence and impact them, we can obviously affect many things that are going on, you know, whether in a city or a state or a nation. Now, this whole, this whole thought or this whole thought process actually originated back in 1975. Um, it uh, came out of a combination of, uh, uh, let's say, three different leaders uh, were involved in, in this whole uh, thought process, this whole thinking. Uh, one was uh, Bill Bright, who was the founder of Campus Crusade. Uh, the other person was Lauren Cunningham, who was a founder of Youth with a Mission. And there was also a theologian named uh, Dr. Francis Schaefer. So, so we're going back in time. We're going back in, to 1975. Um, now, uh, you know, these men, um, did somebody ask a question? Let me see. Yeah, uh, Dave, you have a question? Sorry, Pastor, not, not a question. Oh, so okay, okay, let me just wait on the screen here while I talk, and he should be able to come in. Okay, thank you, Dave. Yeah, so, you know, it, back then, uh, Dr. Bill Bright, uh, Lauren Cunningham, these men were leaders of uh, very large organiza Christian organizations. Uh, Campus Crusade, which is still there today, uh, is a global organization, you know, reaching young people. Uh, Youth with a Mission is still there, reaching many, many people uh, globally. So, uh, very interestingly, somewhere in 1975, uh, God spoke to these three people separately uh, and, uh, and put this thing in their heart. Now, how he spoke to them, uh, or, or he actually spoke to them in, in different ways, and they used different language. But the essence of what they said was very similar. So uh, it, is, you know, it is reported that uh, Dr. Bill Bright and Lauren Cunningham got together for a meeting, at a meeting, maybe over, over a meal, and each one wanted to share with the other person what was going on in their hearts and what God was, you know, putting in their hearts. And, and so when they met and they began to discuss with each other, they, you know, it really was the same thing. It was just that they were using different language um, the, uh, uh, to talk about the same thing, which God was speaking independently uh, to them. So that was a great confirmation. And, uh, uh, and of course, then they shared it with the church at large and uh, people have, uh, uh, developed it further, and you know there are certain ministries around the world who um, have developed this whole concept and whole idea further. But in essence, what is it? Uh, the the thought process or the idea or the concept is that if God's people can influence the seven spheres of society. So you can use the word spheres or pillars or mountains, I mean, whatever metaphor uh, we use. So it's not about the metaphor. It's just the fact that if God's people get into the seven main streams or main areas of society and they are able to influence the culture, 
That is the way people think, the way people practice things, the way people do things. If they're able to be, you know, influence the culture, which literally is what Jesus said, you know, be salt and light, right? So if God's people get into these seven spheres of society and influence the culture, be salt and light in those areas, they can then disciple any nation. So really the, 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 the thinking that was, or the, the, the message that was being given was how to disciple a nation, how to influence you know, a, a huge, a large group of people, a nation, or a city, a state, or a nation. You know, how do you do that? Well, the idea was if God's people get into these seven spheres, seven areas of society, and they are able to influence culture, of course, that means they must be salt and light. It's not just a matter of being there, but it's being there and being salt and light. Then we can disciple a whole nation. So that was what God, that was the message, in essence, you know, of course he used different language, but that was in essence the message that was given to these men of God back then in 1975. So uh, when you look at it from the New Testament, it is very, very biblical in the sense that that's what Jesus taught us. You know, he said, you know, um, you are light of the world, you are salt of the earth, you are light of the world. And, uh, you know, uh, let your light shine. Let, let your light shine. Let people see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. Let people see your good works, the things that you do, and let them glorify your Father who is in heaven. This is Matthew chapter 5. So these seven mountains are, uh, you know, and, and we're just using that term mountain as a metaphor. Uh, it's nothing, you know, uh, nothing spiritual about it. Don't. Don't read too much into it. You can use different language. You can use spheres or areas or segments or pillars or groupings, whatever. Right? But if you look at society as a whole, and we're looking mainly from a perspective of uh, where people engage for their uh, uh, profession, for their career, for their vocation, uh, we can, you know, these seven uh, so society can be, or these spheres uh, where people engage can be broken down into these large categories or areas. One is family. It's the institution set up by God. People spend a lot of time there. Then there is religion, which includes the church. And basically it has to do with belief systems where people worship uh, and uh, believe. Uh, then there's education, which is schools, colleges, universities, all of that. There's media, which is all forms of communication, whether it's uh, print uh, or internet or television. Uh, then there is arts and entertainment, uh, which can be, you know, right from dance and drama and music and uh, sports and other, you know, various forms of, uh, where culture is expressed, celebrated, art and entertainment. Then, of course, there is big business having to deal with the economy, uh, which will, you know, uh, include science and technology and all those activities that uh, engage with the economy. Uh, and lastly, number seven is government. These uh, include the the judicial, the legislative, and the executive branches of government. So what God had put in the heart of hearts of these men was God's people need to be salt and light in these seven areas. Uh, they need to go into those seven areas. Uh, they need to affect culture. They need to, that means, you know, uh, so we are going in there and we have to bring kingdom culture kingdom values. Basically, it's the biblical culture, biblical values. So uh, we have to be in there and then be salt and light uh, and uh, affect the culture there um, uh, in these seven spheres. So that the, we can then, you know, if you can affect culture, that means you're creating an environment, but you're making it conducive for people to then hear the gospel. 
and uh, thereafter come to know and experience Jesus Christ and then be discipled uh, or be made as disciples of Jesus Christ. So that was the vision that God put. And that was what was communicated, you know, uh, in this whole idea of the seven mountain assignment, which today we're calling it seven mountain assignment. But, you know, in those days, they just communicated the idea that the church needs to be in these seven spheres and have influence and make a difference. So um, what uh, what uh, I wanted us to, uh, is, is to understand this and uh, especially when we are planting local churches, we need to have this picture in our minds that, you know, the church that we, you know, when we, when we, when we began this course, we said we want to plant, the goal is to plant churches or establish Christian ministries where uh, it will serve to disciple new believers, but it'll also serve to influence the geography, the, the community, and or it could be extended to a city or even beyond. It's going to influence wherever it's planted. Right? So that's what we're getting at. So the goal is not to just have a little church and where, you know, you could have a few, you know, some people come and worship and, you know, okay, that's good. But the purpose of planting a church is so that the church can then have influence, be salt and light um, where it's planted. And in order to do that, we have to engage with the seven spheres of society. So in the community. So if you look at the immediate community in which the church is being planted or the immediate community in which the, you know, whatever Christian organization is beginning to do its work in an urban context, you could easily see that these seven spheres need to be influenced in some way. And so that's the challenge that we are supposed to influence these seven spheres. And ultimately, of course, we're going to disciple nations. That's the great commission that, that's given to us. And, and so planting the church is working towards the fulfilling of the Great Commission of discipling nations, right? So we need to begin to think of how is the local church that you are planting and that you are, you know, slowly nurturing, how is that local church going to influence these seven spheres in its vicinity, around where it is? I mean, if it can influence the whole, in the city, that's wonderful. If it can get up to a place where it can influence the nation, that's wonderful. But we got to start where we are. We have to start, you know, in, 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 our, in the community, in the vicinity, and look at these seven spheres. People are engaged. Some may be engaged in uh, uh, education. There'll be people who are engaged in media, in arts, you know, sports, and all those kinds of things going on. Of course, a lot of them will be engaged in economy. There'll be the government people or, you know, whether it's the city municipality or in higher levels, education, religion, family. So we need to think, okay, this is our challenge, you know, as a church or as a ministry, we need to be able to influence the influencers, the decision makers who are in these spheres. So we need to start thinking about that. But then how are we going to do it? What is the process? right? How do we affect the culture? How do we affect the environment uh, in these seven spheres? right? And uh, so here's just a quote here from Lauren Cunningham. And he says, uh, salvation comes uh, before discipleship. However, Preparation comes in the soil before the seed is planted. So basically, you know, you got people have to be saved before they can be discipled. But uh, even before they can be saved, the soil has to be prepared. So that's what he's getting at. Right? The soil has to be prepared. Uh, the soil. So he looks at his. You know, he's saying that the soil means really the world, be the way they see things around them, the world. If the soil is hard and unprepared, then, you know, the soil doesn't produce anything. But uh, if the soil is prepared, you know, it's going to produce. Now, how do you prepare the soil? Uh, it has to be tilled, it has to be watered, it has to be nurtured, and then you drop the seed. 
and that good seed will produce uh, uh, fruit. So now, uh, in, in, so the, the basic idea is that we prepare the soil of people's heart by influencing the culture, uh, uh, the, and thereby affecting their worldview and belief systems. So by being around them and exposing them to biblical values, kingdom culture, we are in some way preparing them to receive the message of the gospel. Right. So, you know, for example, just an example, suppose you're, you know, you're working in an office, uh, as, you know, so I believe is working in an office and in the office, let's say he's, he has, you know, three or four colleagues that he's, he's working closely with. And let's say, uh, you know, a, a situation comes where they need to, they, they are, the, the other colleagues are planning to do something wrong. Maybe they're planning to misrepresent some numbers. But then he tells them, you know, hey, that's not the right thing to do. Let's just be honest. Let's just be truthful. Let's just state what it is. Um, uh, and, 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 you know, so what are you doing? He's affecting the culture there. So maybe the three of them or four of them think that yeah, it's okay. We just, you know, make some adjustments. We, you know, uh, manipulate the numbers and keep going. But he says, no, 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 no. Let's, let's do it right. So, you know, so there's a, um, uh, uh, two different cultures uh, meeting, and the believer is then in, uh, uh, influencing their thinking in that simple example, in that thinking. And, uh, you know, he doesn't need to necess necessarily say the Bible says, but he's just affecting the culture. He's being salt and light. And why is he saying that? Because if the believer understands the biblical principle. These four friends may not know the biblical principle. The believer understands the principle of integrity, of honesty, and he's bringing that in there and, uh, and affecting culture. And then, you know, they see the outcome that, yeah, integrity, honesty, um, that's the way to go. And, and then, you know, they begin to develop respect for this believer, what he says, his values. But that process is really preparing their hearts for something more. Is preparing their hearts. I'm just giving one simple example, but like this, you know, over time, uh, the hearts of people are prepared, culture is affected. And then the, when the gospel is presented, they begin to appreciate and understand what we are saying. So we, so that's the process. We need to transform culture. How do we do that? Uh, just like I mentioned it in this example, we have to model biblical principles. That means when I say we, I mean all of us, all of us God's people, you know, whichever sphere that we are involved in. So we need to encourage God's people. So in the local church, as believers are coming and being nurtured, we encourage them, go into these seven spheres, right? So don't sit inside the church. You come into the church, which is, good for worship, for fellowship, for strengthening, and for being equipped. So the church is serving that purpose for these believers. But then they must be motivated to go into these seven spheres, all of these seven spheres, depending on their you know, vocation, depending on their skills and capabilities. And there, they, they need to be encouraged to transform culture. And one way is by modeling biblical principles. So we bring that into the culture. And Jesus, you know, put it in a very, sorry, he put it in a, in a powerful uh, picture. He said, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like leaven, which a woman took and hid in three measures of meal till it was all leaven. This is Matthew 13, uh, 33. So he said, the kingdom of heaven is like this, you know. So it's like a little leaven. So if there's a dough and you put in a little amount of leaven. So today we, you know, we use yeast or some something like that. So if you want to prepare the dough and you put a little bit of yeast, not too much, just bring a little bit of yeast. And then it, it affects the whole dough. 
So Jesus is saying the kingdom of heaven is like that. Right? You put a little bit of it in something larger and it affects the whole environment. Right? So we, uh, we need to uh, bring in these principles, you know, of, of biblical principles, integrity, kindness, justice, faith, and we model it and teach it and coach it. We, uh, sh share, share, basically, we live it out uh, in front of people. We share it with people to whatever extent we can, but we are bringing it in. We're being the, that little leaven, that little yeast in that big uh, measure of dough. Right? So that's the first thing. We need to encourage God's people to be like that. And then secondly, of course, we have to let our light shine by our good works, the things that God's people do, right? Uh, practical things, right? So Lauren Cunningham also went on to say this. He said, use the wealth of the world to bless the world and bless it, not just those in blessing the needy, but bless it to multiply it. That means, you know, in other words, he's saying, look, we, we need to uh, engage with the world and bless the world. Of course, we bless the needy, but also to multiply what's happening, multiply the resources, multiply things that are happening. And, and that's letting our light shine by our good works. You know, so uh, again, it can be, it can happen in uh, many different ways. Whether it's by starting businesses, you provide an employment, you empower people, you give them education, vocational training. So in all of these seven spheres, we are looking at, hey, not only are we are our believers going to be there to change culture, but believers are going to be there to bless that realm, to bless that sphere where we can multiply things, we can improve things, we can make things better. So then we are letting our light shine by our good works. So believers need to be equipped to do that, to go be light in all these seven spheres uh, and, and, and begin to influence, right? And thirdly, of course, we engage in spiritual transformation, you know? So we understand that all these seven spheres, the enemy also is trying to do his part of influencing uh, people, uh, you know, uh, bringing in things that are not right. Uh, and uh, he's trying to control people, control things, even in these seven spheres. So there's also a spiritual battle. So whichever area we are involved in, uh, believers need to be taught and trained on how to pray for those areas. So if they're in education, okay, you pray, see what's happening in the realm of education. We're going to pray, uh, you know, spiritually through prayer, through intercession, through the exercise of our authority and the demonstration of the supernatural power of God. You know, basically we're using spiritual weapons uh, and we begin to affect the spiritual, uh, spiritual transformation, bring in spiritual transformation in those areas. So in education, okay, you know, maybe uh, the school books are filled with uh, uh, teaching on atheism and they are they've completely pushed God uh, outside uh, so there's no you know you know instead of presenting uh, any uh, leaving any room for an understanding of creation that's totally eliminated and you know um, evolution is presented as so it's the only uh, way by which uh, uh, it's the only explanation for the origin of life and and the origin of the cosmos. Uh, and so we say, hey, that's not right. Uh, we need to keep space. You know, okay, people are free to decide, but we need to present or give opportunity for both. You know, and uh, and so, you know, you, you we contend for that. We, uh, we contend for other things, whether it's in education or arts and entertainment or media. You know, the believe, believers are there and they're also engaging spiritually in their circles of influence, you know, wherever they are, they're praying for people, they're praying for decisions that are being made, um, they're praying for policies that are being made. So there they are actually doing it, okay? So uh, I just wanna make sure, I just wanna pause here, just make sure that uh, you are following me, uh, uh, you're all okay, are you with me so far? Did I lose anybody? Is it making sense what we're talking about? Is is it okay? 
Okay, any questions till this point? Okay, I see your responses on the chat. Okay, glad. So I just want to make sure that you know you're following the train of thought and you're understanding what what this this whole uh, uh, area of uh, work uh, in, in involves and you know where this is going. Okay, so so we've said that we've said uh, you know there's the challenge before us. There is a way to do this. We understand what we're trying to do, but then. Uh, how do we do go about it, right? Third is the preparation. That means in the local church that we are planting in the city or in the ministry that we are doing, we need to prepare the people, right? Uh, we can't just send them out and say, hey, go do it. Well, you got to prepare them, right? So let's say you're planting a local church in a, in a city. You know that eventually, we have to influence the community, maybe even the whole city. Um, eventually, maybe you can influence the state or even influence the government, the nation, you know. But to get there, every believer in the church has to be prepared, right? So what kind of preparation should we do? And this happens, of course, through you know, the ministry that's happening in the church. So through the Sunday sermons that you're preaching, through the Bible studies that are happening, through various ways that whatever's happening in that local church or in that Christian ministry, you're preparing people. Uh, what are some of the things? First and, for, first and foremost, we have to prepare the hearts of the people. Because going out there into these seven spheres as we're talking about, it's not an easy thing. And if our hearts are not in the right place, eh, it's very really easy even for a believer to get distracted, to get sidetracked. And sometimes they may just you know, forget about the fact that they've been sent there to influence and impact uh, their, their, their sphere. So we need to guard, we need to help people, God's people, guard their desires, right? Uh, because we have to guard against lust for money, power, influence, our desire, our appetites. So we need to keep our desires pure and directed towards glorifying God. Because, for example, just think about it. You know, you're telling a believer, hey, you've got to go into business and you've got to be, you've got to uh, influence that that area for, for God. Sure, he prepares himself. You know, he studies, he does his one of education, then he gets a job, he goes into business, saying, I'm here to influence influence this you know my 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 circle for the kingdom of god i'm in this sphere of business wonderful let's say and he starts you know working and uh, but suddenly he you know he's being successful and he gets caught up in that going after money and power and influence and he forgets that hey i'm supposed to be salt and light while i'm doing this while i'm being successful while i'm you know being a good business person and whatever he's doing, I also need to be salt and light. So if their heart is not ready, desire is not, you know, they don't know how to guard desires, they could get sidetracked. Similarly with motivations, you know, why uh, the motivations have, also have to be always guarded. You know, why are you making this, uh, the why behind the decisions, the choices, the purposes that are being made. So uh, God's people, uh, need to be, you know, taught on how to guard your motivations and keep it godly, so that uh, you know, uh, if you know whether in, it's, it has to do with money or other things, uh, you it's all directed towards glorifying God and blessing people, right? Similarly, we have to guard character, right? So we shouldn't, uh, in the process of engaging in these seven mountains, we cannot let uh, character be diluted, because then our whole you know, whatever we say doesn't hold, and we, we cease being salt and light. So believers need to be taught, you know, so you're going to go there. The like case example, you're going to go into media, you're going to go into arts and entertainment, you know, you're going to be involved in there, but don't compromise your character. You know, you've got to maintain godly character, that's a life that is pure and 
acceptable and pleasing before God. So it's not easy, especially in certain, uh, in many of these sphere, spheres that we're talking about, it's not easy. You know, so you can imagine if a believer is in the entertainment industry, uh, is it wrong to be there? It's not wrong to be there. It's not wrong to be in the entertainment industry. God needs people there. But uh, uh, it's not easy to maintain purity or maintain certain godly standards or a believer engaging in business, you know, uh, uh, when it when things are getting hard and tough, um, uh, you know, uh, a believer has to maintain his standards of integrity. Otherwise, he ceases being salt and light. He loses influence, the godly influence, the kingdom influence that he's supposed to bring. But where can his desires and motivations and character and how can those those be strengthened? The church can play a very important part in helping believers, you know, prepare themselves for these seven spheres so they can be salt and light. You know, so you think about today, the church, where the church is today. And, and, I, and I can think about, you know, our own city, Bangalore City. Uh, and uh, you may be able to see something similar in your city. We have many believers and we have many believers in, uh, in these seven spheres that we are talking about. But how much of kingdom influence is being brought in there. How much of salt, how, how many are really being salt and light in those seven spheres? You know, or how is the church, how are the churches in our city equipping believers to be salt and light there? Are we doing a good job? Are we really helping them? You know, so those are questions we have to ask and I, I'm sure we can do a much better uh, I'm talking about you know churches in Bangalore. Uh, I'm sure we can do a much better job in uh, in helping God's people prepare to be salt and light, and thereby affect culture in all these seven spheres. You know, and but that's got to be part of what we're doing when we're planting a church. That that's what we want to do for believers, right? So heart preparation, because that's very 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 important. The second part uh, where we are going to help believers uh, as they prepare to be salt and light in these seven spheres is the spiritual preparation. I mean, both are uh, connected, of course, with the heart preparation, spiritual preparation, but this is more, I'm talking about more into uh, the, the, the application, the applying of biblical principles, right? So we need to teach them, okay? You know, here are the biblical principles that you can use in your sphere of, sorry, in your sphere of influence. You know, so a businessman, you know, what are the principles that he would need when he's engaging in business, in his, in his profession, somebody in education, somebody in media? What are biblical principles they need to keep in mind as they are engaging in their sphere of influence? And then we need to equip them to tap into the spiritual resources. You know, how can they uh, tap into the anointing of the Holy Spirit, into faith, uh, into, you know, to, to be creative, and into the wisdom of God, into the prophetic, the supernatural, in their sphere of influence. You know, and, and we have great examples in the Bible. You know, think about Joseph. We can go back in time and think about Joseph. You know, he was there in part of his house. Uh, he had a wonderful, you know, his, his heart, uh, his desires, motivations, character was wonderfully protected. He was a man who, who you know, we could say he, he, he set an example for us here. His heart and his character was, motivations was protected. You know, he was there in Potiphar's house, but he never compromised. Now, he went through some challenges. He was wrongly accused. He was thrown into prison. But then his day came. How did it happen? Because of wisdom. Because of the Holy Spirit giving him wisdom, he could interpret dreams. So initially, he interpreted the dreams of the baker and the butler. Wonderful. But now he's brought up to stand before Potiphar, uh, Pharaoh. And uh, Pharaoh said, can you interpret my dream? And uh, so here is Joseph. He not only interprets Pharaoh's dreams, but he also gives a solution. He says, okay, look, there are going to be seven years of famine, 
but this is what you have to do in the seven years of plenty that come first. Right? So he's giving him a solution for the, and that's going to save the whole land of Egypt, the people. But what is he doing? He is t- tapping into spiritual resources. He's tapping to the wisdom of God uh, in order to, you know, uh, do his work there. So that's what we need to teach people, right? Now, many believers don't realize that, you know, we can actually take the anointing of God into the workplace, into these seven spheres, uh, uh, that when, when they go out there to do what they have to do, you know, whether it's education or business or entertainment or arts or media or whatever sphere there, the anointing of God is with them. The Holy Spirit is with them. The Holy Spirit does not leave them, the, you know, just because they went out of the Sunday service. No, the Holy Spirit is with them Monday through Saturday when they're engaging in these spheres. And we need to equip believers. So look, you can expect God to work through you, to give you wisdom, to give you solutions, uh, to do wonderful things. Because it's through that they're going to be able to show those good works. Right? But this is part of what the church plant or the local church has to do for the believers so that they can then go and influence those seven spheres. Okay? Uh, I'll just cover one more point and I'll, I'll pause and we'll take questions. Then, of course, we have to encourage believers to do the natural preparation. That means, you know, they, they, they encourage them, motivate them to develop skills and capabilities in whatever sphere that they are engaged in, uh, encourage them to demonstrate excellence. So whatever sphere, you know, you need the natural skills, the skills and abilities to be good in your work. So they need to do that. We need to encourage them. Um, unfortunately, uh, uh, you know, the church in some ways has deterred people, has prevented people uh, from pursuing uh, engagement or involvement in these areas, right? Uh, so they don't get involved in media, don't get involved in art, so don't get involved in entertainment. It's, you know, uh, but we need to encourage them and say, okay, you develop skills, you be sharp in your skills, be good at what you do so that you can make a difference. Okay. So I'm going to stop here. We will continue this tomorrow as we talk about positioning and so on in the seven spheres. But uh, any thoughts, any questions so far? Uh, is, is it clear on what this the seven mountain assignment is? and why it is important for a local church or a ministry that we are starting in an urban center. Uh, is it clear? Is, um, is that okay? Yeah. Any thoughts, any questions um, on this in uh, relation to maybe what you are doing, uh, what you are engaging in? Any questions? Okay. All right. I don't see any questions and, uh, uh, okay. All right, so things are clear. All right, okay. Fine. So let's pause here. Uh, We will pick this up. Uh, I'll continue this tomorrow and just, we'll just do a quick review and, uh, I finished this tomorrow. Um, if you have any thoughts, any questions, you know, we can uh, bring it up tomorrow and discuss it. But I want you to think about this very seriously. How you, even now, you know, wherever you are working, yeah, how you could develop people to go and influence these seven spheres and how they can make a difference, you know, how we can be salt and light in these spheres. We've got to encourage them. We don't have to pull them out of it. Uh, we don't have to, you know, the church, I'm saying the church shouldn't pull people out of believers out of it. We should encourage believers. Uh, walk, you know, as Jesus said, you know, we had to be wise like serpents, harmless like doves. So you go in there with wisdom and bring about kingdom influence in these areas. So think about it uh, in the areas that you are involved in, in the areas that you are doing ministry how you can encourage people and power them, okay? I will talk more on this tomorrow. Let's close in prayer today. Um, I'd just like to invite somebody to pray with us as a class, and then we will dismiss. Uh, Anybody could pray.
Go ahead. Dave, Kieran. Father God, we just come before once again your throne, Father God. Father God, just uh, help us to understand, Father God, whatever today learn, Father God, the seven mountain of the assignment, the work, Father God, to your kingdom. Father God, just help us to reveal uh, your more revelation, Father God, and give, uh, give more understanding and wisdom and knowledge, Father God, that we can receive and understand the subject and uh, we can use to our uh, our city and nation, Father God. Mm -hmm. Father God, give your uh, wisdom and knowledge. Thanking you, Father God, the class. Thanking you, sir, and all the students, Father God. Thank mm -hmm. you for listening our prayer. Almighty Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 All right. Thank you, everyone. We're going to continue this tomorrow. Mm -hmm. uh, think about this. Okay. God bless you. Bye now. Thank you, Father. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. God bless.